Hey guys, what's up? This is the deck tech for my Even Sentinels list. Uh, I'm using this list as my tribal Brewer's Brawl submission. That is uh, a new, really cool series. Uh, we've got five days, five different decks. Um, you can submit them, and if they like your deck, they'll go ahead and feature it. Maybe we'll see the devs playing, um, and it'll be really exciting to potentially have... Um, be cool to see the devs playing one of my decks for a change so i'm excited to see that uh let me know what decks you're interested in seeing uh toss those down in the comments and if you want to see more content like this please subscribe and like to this video all right so we just finished the set with this this deck is sweet um we're using sentinels and some discard and it's an even deck and uh i wanted to play with angelica I tried to find a deck that could slot in Angelica and still be good. Uh, she is a 3-8, um, and that's pretty sweet. Um, and we're able to power up her by having like Draco Shaman Circlets and stuff and Souls Rests in our Void. And then she's giving stuff plus 8, and also just being a 3-8 was fine. Uh, I played this a few times. It came up against one of my Yeti opponents where she was just bigger than everything else on the board and uh, really bogged them down real good. So Angelica's pretty cool. That's why I wanted to start with it. Uh, let's just take a look at the cards. Uh, Even-handed Golem helps us just flip through our deck and it's basically our main source of card draw. We're really not, like, we're just playing a lot of good stuff and we don't have a ton of ways to draw cards outside of Even-handed Golem, so it fills that role for us. Um, Learned Herbalist is our only way to discard big Sentinels and stuff from our hand. Oftentimes the deck can be super clunky otherwise, so Learned Herbalist will actually let us play in a perfect world a turn 4 Great Kiln Titan or like a turn 4 Royal Guardian, which is pretty hilarious. Um, and you can also just like put a Circlet or something in there and uh, maybe unlock the Vault it later. But uh, Herbalist is our only form of discard. Um, honestly though, one of the most common things I do with Herbalist is I just discard a power and then use Ar Arcanum Hourglass to get it back. So, uh, it's pretty sweet, um, and it's not an, it's not an explorer, but it's not really that big of a deal. It's not as important as you'd think for everything to be explorers. Uh, speaking of explorers, Trailmakers, uh, are first of two explorers, and, uh, giving us influence and one power is pretty sweet. Um, it lets us get away with this silly mana base where we're playing a bunch of vows and like chairman's contracts and stuff And uh, otherwise we really wouldn't be able to get away with it But trailmaker helps fill that out and make sure you know we can be the influencers We always wanted to be on Instagram, but instead we'll do it in eternal uh, I talked about Angelica Just you know no one plays her. I wanted to be the one to play her. So we play her uh, pompous historian Draw a Sentinel or a Relic from the top five cards of your deck, discard the rest. Um, so this is pretty sweet. Uh, it's synergy with our discard, it's synergy with our Sentinels, it's synergy with our Relics. So it just slots right in. Um, it, it just makes sense to run this card, just run it. You know, run this card. Anyway, Sandstorm Titan. Uh, this card has been ridiculous since launch. And it's no different here. It's actually one of my favorite cards to stirring stands back into play because it has endurance so you can actually block with it. Sometimes that was the downside of stirring sand is uh, you'd make this like big play and then you just die before you could untap. But uh, then you'd be able to like exhaust your trail maker on six and put like a titan back into play and like a big thing. So they have to deal with your titan and then you're going to untap and have a big thing. That's sweet. Uh, we are playing an even-handed golem deck, so of course we've got a broker market, and our market is whack. There is no way that this is the optimal version of this market. I just put in whatever I wanted, and uh, I guess you just kind of have to deal with that. <laughs> Disjunction is probably one of the cards that should 100% be here. Uh, being able to draw our own attachments and kill opponent's attachments is great versatility. Uh, even if you draw four of these, you'll find use for all of them. It's really fun to use this with Jawbone because you can keep flickering it, like you keep just replaying Jawbone. I actually kind of like Jawbone as I went on and I would maybe consider adding more. 
But uh, the configuration, the way it is, worked pretty well, so I'm not going to touch it. Um, Grodov Stranger, I lost to a mill player, and then I just added this into the market. I know that's kind of scummy, but no, it do be like that sometimes. And then uh, Unlock the Vault, this is my favorite card to grab from the market. Um, grabbing Draco Shaman Circlet and like a Xenon Obelisk and a Jawbone is a great way to cheese your opponents out of a game. Um, if you're familiar with Needles Kane 13, he really likes this card. So I wanted to play with it, and Unlock the Vault is a great way to do that. And uh, honestly, this card really kicked ass. There's a lot of really good dragons. Like, there's not a lot of... Even, like, some of the Draft Bomb dragons are still pretty sweet. So um, it, it definitely overperformed, and maybe it should be a four slot, but... uh. I had a lot of fun putting Draco Shaman Circlet on like Brokers and Evenhanded Golems or Angelica because then it can't be annihilated, which is pretty funny. And Annihilate's one of the most common removal spells in the format right now. So uh, dodging that's pretty sweet. Also, if they turn to seed your guy, you still just have the weapon sitting on it. So turn to seed doesn't even answer this. Um, and chances are, if you're giving something plus five, Ice Bolt doesn't kill it either. So. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. Um, if you're playing against like a primal deck, maybe put it on your Sandstorm Titan so you can't get permafrosted. But uh, yeah, let's hop back to where we were at before. Great Kiln Titan. If you haven't seen this card, it's been a while since Sentinels have been hyped. But honestly, this is the reason to play a Sentinel deck. This guy is an absolute house. Uh, when you play a Relic, deal damage equal to cost to an enemy. And that's not even its best ability. Look at this last effect. At the end of your turn, play the top card of your deck. Not draw, play it. It just yeets it into play. So you could yeet another Great Kiln Titan into play. Or if you're like just getting the Ultra Spice awesome top deck, you'll yeet like a Xenon Obelisk into play and hit something for four. Uh, it's just... I mentioned the deck doesn't have a card draw, a lot of card draw. It doesn't need a lot of card draw. It just puts stuff into play. It's great. Uh, you make use of your void. You make use of the top of your deck. And uh, you don't need card draw. We just we just put stuff in play. That's what we do. That's what we're here to do. Uh, Royal Guardian gains a lot of life. Um, it also fits perfectly into the even shell. And uh, if you ever needed a way to stabilize a game real quick, it's uh, you'll play like a Chairman's Contract or a Learned Herbalist. And then super spice mode is if you discard your royal garden to Orbalist, Herbalist, and then use Stirring Sand to put it back into play, and it triggers its tribute. So if you're trying to unlock an achievement, do that. Um, and then next up, how could we play a Sentinel deck without the ultimate spicy meme boy himself? Nova Quake Titan. We're actually playing quite a few relics, so we're going to draw cards off of this. And silencing your opponent's board out of nowhere is a fantastic way to just close out a game. Um, moving along, we are an Hourglass deck. I mentioned this before, but I don't think I played a single game where I drew Hourglass and I wasn't like flipping power with it every turn. Uh, we definitely went all in on always having hits, and it worked out for us, and I really enjoyed it, honestly. Um, Jawbone Greatsword, I talked about this, but Brand is sweet. It's really easy to trigger Tribute in this deck. And uh, even though the cards themselves, like apart, are kind of mediocre, um, sometimes you just want to kill something and get a big fat dude to play. And Brand will end a game real quick. Like, stack your even handed Golem, and now you've got this 8 6 with Berserker Overwhelm. Like, yeah, your opponent better have removal, or they're just going to get overwhelmed <laughs> all right uh xenon obelisk is uh it's an old staple of this deck i'm only playing two because we're playing a lot of hourglasses too and this card can get kind of clunky but uh when we're playing all these crappy weenies buffing the whole board is a great thing to do and uh just being able to uh turn all of our guys into threats and uh is pretty solid if we only had Hourglass, we really wouldn't have that many exciting things to get back with Unlock the Vault either. So Opalus kind of fills that role as well. And then um, I talked about Circlet, but Dragons! And then I already talked about Stirring Sands, but um, 
basically for four power you get one sentinel for six power and an explorer exhausted you get two and then three and then four uh usually two or three will probably be the limit but uh you know guy's the limit the power base is weird we're only playing seed of impulse we don't get any silexes uh, we're playing eight vows and then just sigils and it might look like it's not enough influence, but it's just fine. I didn't have a single problem in any of my games with at least getting influence screwed. Thanks to Trailmaker, uh, Herbalist, and Hourglass, um, and even like Gollum, like you're gonna have a ton of power at your hands and you really don't need that much of each to start casting things. The hardest part potentially is getting an Angelica on time, but even that really isn't that challenging, so. Um, yeah, you might not get her on time, but it's fine. And then, uh, yeah, Chairman's Contract's great. Um, if you wanted to build a budget version of this deck, I'd say don't play this deck. I'm being honest, like, this is not really a good deck to play budget. Because Gil I'd say Kiln Titan and Sandstorm Titan are mandatory. And, like, if you're not playing with these, um, you can cut... So, like... Assuming you were trying to budget this deck, let's cut, like... <laughs> we're gonna have to cut, like, Jawbone, Draco Shaman, you know, maybe max out on Obelisks. And then we're gonna cut Nova Quake and Royal Guardians. And then maybe you can play, like, a Bond Sentinel. Um, there's this guy. Jump over to him. Um, you could play Intriguing Ancient and then just try and max out on like the go wideiness of the deck and uh you know play more obelisks and like maybe if you already have your grodov strangers you could like main deck four of these but uh i would not try and play a budget version of this deck um you could just play more removal too uh another card i'm not playing that you should probably make room for uh kairos's choice is a pretty sweet card with golem and being removal on top of that is awesome so maybe if you're trying to budget it up, consider this card and consider the bond card and there would be cheap ways to kind of fill out this deck. But uh, that's it. Thank you for watching the deck tech. If you want to see the gameplay, the link will be down below or off to the side or you should be able to find it. Uh, the thumbnail should be the same. Um, if you have any ideas for me to brew for the next couple coming days of the Brewers baller brawl <laughs> uh feel free to toss those in the comment in my discord or hop onto my stream and boss me around live so those are the options if you like this video please like it and if you want to see more content please subscribe thank you